If you're a PBS certifier, this video is for you, as we'll be covering the vehicle labelling requirements on PBS certifications. We'll be covering the labelling for identical vehicles, dimensionally identical vehicles, non-identical vehicles, vehicle unit labelling such as trucks, trailers, dollies, lead, middle and rear trailers, how to label prime movers with multiple fifth wheel offset positions, the labelling of trailer sets, how vehicle drawings should be presented, and the grandfathering requirements where previous naming conventions have been used in the past. The reason why vehicle labelling is important on vehicle approval certifications is to ensure clarity on the differences between vehicles. So similar vehicles can be grouped together and so each vehicle can be referred to consistently throughout all documentation. This helps to improve VA processing times and to achieve consistency in certification submissions. Certifiers must ensure consistent use of labels throughout the following documents. The combination matrix, certifier certificate, the part B and the assessor sign off, otherwise known as an ASO. Labeling of as-built drawings is optional, but if they are labeled, they must follow this practice. Each vehicle on a PBS certification must be labeled so the group of vehicles it belongs to can be uniquely identified. Vehicles should be given primary labels with numbers to distinguish dimensional differences, for example, prime mover one and prime mover two. And vehicles should be uniquely identified with sub-label letters to distinguish component and specification differences, for example, prime mover one A and prime mover one B. We'll go into more detail on this shortly. When certifying a group of vehicles, or adding vehicles to an existing VA, the labelling of vehicles will fall into one of the three following categories. Completely identical vehicles. Vehicles that are identical in all respects, dimensions and specifications must be grouped under the same vehicle label. Dimensionally identical vehicles. Vehicles that are dimensionally identical with the same body type but differ in specifications or components must use the same primary label and a different sub-label as the sub-label signifies that the components such as the suspension or transmission are different. Non-identical vehicles. Vehicles that differ dimensionally or in body type must be assigned a unique primary label. For completely identical vehicles, every single dimension as per the design approval must be the same. This includes, but is not limited to, the front overhang, the rear overhang, the vehicle height and the fifth wheel offset. All components and specifications as listed on the certificate and the Part B must also be the same. On the certificate, identical vehicles must have their VINs grouped together on the same table with the label clearly shown in the header. The ASO and combination matrix must also show identical VINs grouped together. Vehicles that are dimensionally identical and have the same body type but different specifications such as the engine and suspension must use a primary label and a sub-label. Primary labels must be numerical and sub-labels must be lowercase letters. For example, prime over 1A and 1B or prime over 2A and 2B. The key reason for the use of a primary label is that each primary label corresponds to a vehicle's dimensions. If vehicles do not have the same dimensions, they must be separated by using unique primary labels. When determining primary labels, no dimensional tolerance is applied, so all vehicle dimensions must be the same. Vehicles must also have the same body type. For example, a vehicle with bins for bulk material and a vehicle with logging bolsters cannot be grouped together under the same primary label. These vehicles must use Truck 1 and Truck 2 primary labels. This includes but is not limited to other body types, such as drop deck trailers, double drop deck trailers, container vehicles, livestock vehicles, car carriers and tankers. These label differences identify a different combination for anomaly purposes. Please note, even though vehicles may have some different dimensions and have different vehicle labels, they can still share the same axle spacings or identical axle spacing footprint and will continue to be issued with the same VA number for access permit purposes. For example, an existing VA 4006 has truck 1 and trailer 1. A new certification then adds an additional trailer with a longer rear overhang. The new trailer should be labelled as Trailer 2 due to the dimensional differences. But as the axle spacings of the vehicle remain the same, the new VA will keep the same VA number, 4006, and will not affect the road access permit. Sublabels. Any specification differences between vehicles must be identified with a different sublabel letter. This means if there are any differences on the Part B or the certificate, vehicles must have unique labels. Sublabels must not be listed in the same table on the certifier certificate and splitting of cells in the certification tables to accommodate the specification differences is also not permitted. The only exception here is for tyres. As vehicle approvals show a list of approved tyres for the vehicle, tyres are allowed to be grouped together on the certificate. 
When vehicles require sub-labels, all vehicles for that primary label must also have sub-labels. You can't have Trailer 1 and Trailer 1A. This should be Trailer 1A and Trailer 1B. Let's have a look at some examples. Example 1. Here we have two prime movers that are identical in all respects except for the drive suspension. One is fitted with mechanical suspension and the other is fitted with air suspension on the drive axles. These vehicles must be labelled as Prime Mover 1A and Prime Mover 1B. Example 2. Two trucks are identical in all respects except for the GCM rating. The two vehicles must be labelled as Truck 1A and Truck 1B. Example 3. Two trucks are identical in all respects except that one truck is eligible for 6.5 tonnes on the steer axle and the other is not. The two trucks must be labelled as Truck 1A and Truck 1B. Vehicles that differ dimensionally must be assigned unique primary labels. Things to look out for would be any vehicle dimensions, the vehicle body type, steer axles and lift axles. Any differences in these characteristics between vehicles means they should be assigned a unique primary label. Let's have a look at some examples. Example 1. Two trucks are dimensionally identical, but one has a bin height of 3 metres and another has a bin height of 2.7 metres. These vehicles must be labelled as Truck 1 and Truck 2. Example 2. Two trailers are dimensionally identical, but one trailer is fitted with a lift axle. These vehicles are non-identical, as the rear overhang line changes position due to the presence of the lift axle. These vehicles must be labelled as Trailer 1 and Trailer 2. Each unit should have consistent labelling for the vehicle type and position, and must use the following naming convention. For hauling units, they should be labelled as Prime Mover or Truck for load carrying vehicles. For combinations with one trailer, such as semi-trailers and dog trailers, they should simply be labelled as Trailer. For A-double and B-double combinations, they should be labelled as Lead Trailer, Rear Trailer and Dolly for A-doubles. Other naming conventions such as Tag Trailer, A-trailer and B-trailer should not be used. For triple road trains, Trailer labels should be lead, middle, and rear trailers. When multiple dollies are used in these types of combinations, they must follow the same convention. So lead dolly and rear dolly in this case. For quad road trains, labels should be lead, second, third, and rear trailers. Dollies will then be lead, middle, and rear dollies. Vehicle units are further clarified when the combinations trailer sets are designated. For example, if a truck and dog combination actually has a dolly and semi-trailer, then this will be clearly shown as a trailer set. The VIN list will show separate VINs for each of the vehicle units and the trailer set table will designate which dollies and trailers are to be used together. For A-doubles that have dog trailers where the dolly is permanently fixed to the trailer via a ball race and both the dolly and trailer only have one VIN number, the trailer set must simply state lead trailer and rear trailer. This indicates that the dolly and rear trailer are permanently connected. For A-double combinations where a trailer can be used in both positions, it must be labelled as Trailer 1 with lead and rear in brackets. This means there are three types of trailers for A-doubles. Lead trailers, rear trailers and trailers that can be used in both the lead and rear positions. Primary labels should start at 1 for each type of trailer with additional trailers consecutively increasing. Once trailer labels have been defined by position and primary labels, the trailer set tables then clarify the compatibility between trailers. Please note that primary labels should not increase across trailer types. Having labels such as Lead Trailer 1 and Trailer 2 is not permitted. If a prime mover or group of prime movers under the same primary label is to be used with multiple fifth wheel offset positions, the fifth wheel offset difference is to be distinguished by a suffix in the combination matrix. Variations to the fifth wheel offset creates combinations that differ in axle spacings and may affect compliance with the DA dimension set the tier 1 bridge formula and allowable masses. The suffix must include the fifth wheel offset direction with values measured forward from the center of the drive axle group as negative and values rearward of the axle group as positive. Please ensure this labeling is included in the combination matrix and ASO when required. For multi-trailer combinations, only the primary label is to be used when labeling trailer sets. Sub labels should not be used in the trailer set label. For example, here we have an A-double with lead trailer 1A and 1B, a dolly and rear trailer 1 and 2. The compatibility of these trailers make four trailer sets. These trailer sets should simply be labelled trailer set 1, 2, 3, 4. Not trailer set 1A, 1B, etc. Certifiers may notice that the vehicle labels on the VA and ASO may be different for the trailer sets and the combination matrix. There is a reason for this. 
On the ASO, any component difference between trailers will create a new trailer set and a new combination. The ASO groups anomalies by combination and not for individual units. ASO trailer sets and the combination matrix should include vehicle sublabels. This extra layer of resolution is needed to identify exactly what anomalies exist for each combination. NHVR may simplify the trailer set matrix on the VA by removing the sublabels where possible for ease of reading for operators, road managers, and on road compliance personnel. This can only be done when the variant remains the same and the mass tables are not affected. For more information on the ASO process, please see the work procedure on the NHVR website. Labelling of as built drawings is optional. For where certifiers choose to label drawings, only trailer set labels are to be used. For example, an as-built drawing must be labelled as Prime Mover 1 and Trailer Set 1, not Prime Mover 1 and Lead Trailer 1, Rear Trailer 1. Drawings do not require sub-labels as vehicles should be condensed using primary labels. Vehicle labels should be located in the top left-hand corner of each drawing for ease of referencing. Please note, vehicle drawings may be condensed by including multiple vehicles in a reference table that should clearly show the vehicle dimensions. Here is an example with a truck and dog where a new truck is being added with the same dimensions except for the bin height. The new truck will be labelled as Truck 2 and can be shown on the same drawing, but should clearly show the dimensional differences between each vehicle. This can be done in multiple ways, either via a table below or directly on the drawing. Please ensure vehicle drawings contain a title block with a unique drawing number or name, as well as the date the drawing was created. This also helps to identify each combination clearly and keep track of any drawing changes that may occur. For certifications where a different naming convention was used in the past, previously used labels can be grandfathered. This means that certifiers are not required to amend previously used labels. However, all new certifications must conform to the labelling requirements as previously outlined. If certifiers choose to relabel combinations, they may do so and would be preferred to avoid any confusion. Please ensure consistent use of labels throughout all certification documents, including the certifier certificate, combination matrix, the ASO, the Part B, and the as-built vehicle drawings. For clarity and consistency, we strongly recommend that any previously approved combinations are brought to this standard. Just to summarise a couple of key points to take away, would be to ensure that the vehicle's primary and sub-labels are correct. So if the vehicles have any differences in dimensions, then a different primary label is required. If the vehicles have differences on the Part B, then different sub-labels are required. A handy way to remember this is that as dimensions are numbers, the label number must change with dimensional differences. And as the Part B emphasizes a letter in its name, Part B differences will give vehicles new sub-label letters. For more information on vehicle labeling, please see the information sheet for PBS assessors and certifiers, IPAC number eight.